This week, I purchased five laptop motherboards that were described as powering on, but not showing any display. This is the first of those laptop motherboards. It's from HP. It's a DA G7 AL MB 8C0 Revision C. As you can see, we've no RAM with it. We've no power adapter, but at least I do have the DC in jack and I have a spare HP power adapter here that I think will do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring power to this. We're going to scan the motherboard to the screen and I'm going to start putting some measurements on the screen and see if we can work out why this is not showing any display. I've scanned an image of this motherboard to the screen and this is what it looks like. So we're going to start where we always start at the DC in jack. Now, as you can see, we have eight pins on this connector. So indicated by number one, up here we have this little dot. So we've one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So let's mark in those pins. Now I've checked the schematic and worked out what each of those pins is for. So as you can see, pins one and two are our DC in. Pins three, four, and five are our ground pins. There's some sort of ID pin on pin six, and we've got an LED on seven and another LED on pin eight. My power adapter connected. The first thing we need to check is if we're getting the correct DC voltage across those pins on DC input jack. So let's check that. So I introduced my multimeter in volts DC in a 20 volt range. We place black probe to ground and red probe to pin one, which is the DC in pin, and we measure 19.80 volts. So we're getting the correct voltage onto the motherboard. So having confirmed that we are getting the correct voltage to the motherboard, I want to follow that 19.8 volts into the system. So we know we're measuring 19.8 volts here, so as we can see it goes under this connector here, under this connector here, and onto this track, and we're following that up along this path, across that diode, and onto this MOSFET here. So just, let's just mark in that path so it's clear for everybody. Our 19.8 volts comes on to the drain pins of this input MOSFET right here. We've got four drain pins here, three source pins on the other side, and a gate pin here that controls whether the MOSFET is on or off. I took a measurement at the gate pin of that first MOSFET and found that we had 24.5 volts. That's a high signal, so our first MOSFET should be switched on. And to confirm this, we take a measurement at the source pins. And at the source pins of the first MOSFET, we find that we measure 19.80 volts. Coming through our first MOSFET, our 19.8 volts then travels across this track and onto a second MOSFET. Now that second MOSFET is also an N-channel MOSFET. As you can see, we have three source pins together here. We have a gate pin which controls whether the second MOSFET is on or off, and we have four drain pins on the other side. So measuring at the gate pin of this MOSFET, we find that there is 24.5 volts also. So this is an appropriate signal to switch that MOSFET on. And to confirm that the MOSFET is on, we measure the drain pins and we find that we have 19.8 volts. After passing through our second MOSFET, our 19.8 volts then travels along this track and up to this current sense resistor right here. And after it comes through that current sense resistor, it then goes off to all the other circuits within the laptop. So at this point we have confirmed that our main 19.8 volts DC input is making it through our two input MOSFETs to our current sense resistor and has been delivered down to other parts of the board and we're going to follow it down to our battery management IC. On the other side of the board I found this Intersil 88739B battery management IC. Now we've seen on many of the other Dell laptops that we have a battery management IC, that's an NVDC, where our input voltage from the adapter is regulated down to a lower voltage that's called VSYS, and that's sent down to the secondary circuits. But when I was taking measurements around this intercell battery management IC, I couldn't find a VSYS voltage, you know, about 12 to 16 volts or whatever it is usually. So I took a look at the schematic and when I looked at the schematic what I found was that in this particular battery management IC it doesn't regulate the voltage down to a VSYS. So we have our 19.8 volts coming in here from the adapter through our two input MOSFETs and that's going straight down as our VSYS voltage down to the secondary circuits. So what we should be measuring is 19.8 volts at the input of all of those secondary circuits. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put on screen all of the measurements that I took around this power management IC. First of all, we're going to show you the pinouts 
and here are the measurements that I took at each of those pins. Obviously I've tried to measure at the capacitors that are connected to each of the pins because that's safer. But this is a full list of the voltages that I took for the important pins of this battery management IC. So at this point we have confirmed that we have our main VSYS voltage which is 19.80 volts and that is being sent down to all of our secondary circuits. The next thing we need to work out is if we are getting our 3.3 volts always on power. This IC right here is the IC that's responsible for producing our 3.3 volts always on power. Let me show you the pinouts for this IC. So what should we be expecting here if this IC is working? Well first of all we should be getting 19.8 volts on our input pins here and if we're getting 19.8 volts on our input this IC should produce two output voltages. It should produce a 3.3 volts LDO voltage on pin 17 which we can measure at this capacitor right here and it should also produce a higher current 3.3 volts on the LX pins here pins 19 and 20 which we can measure at this inductor. These are the measurements that I took. On pins 2, 3, 4 and 5 I measured 19.8 volts so that's the correct input voltage. On pin 17 I took a voltage measurement at this capacitor right here and I found it measures 3.3 volts so our LDO voltage is online. And finally on pins 19 and 20 I took a measurement at this inductor right here and found that we also had 3.3 volts. So this IC is working. So having established that we have our 3.3 volts online, my next step was to see if I could find the power button and see if that was working properly. But the power button is not actually on this board, it's on a daughter board that I don't have. So what I'm going to do is look up the Super I.O. chip, see if I can find where the power button signal comes in. I located the Super I.O. It's this IC right here. This ITE IT5570E-128. So as you can see there's 128 pins on it. So let me mark in the numbers on each of those pinouts. So as you can see we have a lot of pins on this. But there's only one that I'm interested in and I located it from the schematic and that is the power switch. So the power switch signal comes in on pin 110. Now as I mentioned earlier, we don't have the daughter board that contains the power button. So how can we possibly emulate the power button being pressed? Well it's quite simple really. Here is where the signal comes in from the power button. So we very carefully ground this pin temporarily to emulate the power button being pressed. Now the pins on this IC are tiny, so I didn't want a jumper directly from pin 110 to ground in case I touched my jumper wire off one of the other pins. But if you look closely, you can see that pin 110 is actually connected to this SMD resistor here. So I thought it would be easier to jumper from this resistor to ground. Let me show you how I did that. So I got a piece of jumper wire and connected it between that resistor and ground and then released it to emulate the power button being pressed. After using my jumper wire to emulate the power button being pressed, I put my finger to the CPU here and I could feel it warming up. So that confirmed to me that it was powering on. Next, I connected the HDMI output from this laptop motherboard to my HDMI monitor. And when I did that, nothing was showing up on the display. So it seems that it is consistent with the fault that was originally described to me. The laptop is powering on but not showing any display. So the first thing I want to check when I've got a power on but no display is to confirm that all of our secondary voltages are online. So I took down all the voltage measurements from all of the secondary inductors and here is what I measured. Now when citing these measurements I would usually refer to each of the inductors by their label but I don't have a schematic for this and there's no labels on the motherboard. But you can see here I measured 1.22 volts on this inductor right here which is for our memory. We had already established that we were measuring 3.3 volts on this inductor here but just to confirm we're also getting our 5.10 volts on our 5 volt rail which is also online. Uh, as we move up towards the CPU, these two inductors right here are measuring 1.80 volts and at the top here we have another inductor that measures 1.80 volts. So is there anything about that that looks unusual to you? 
while powered on I powered up my thermal camera and I observed the only component on the board that was heating up was the CPU. Now obviously the CPU is running hot that's why it requires a heatsink but there were no other components that were showing up as running hot on my thermal camera. So I think I know what's wrong with this motherboard. Why don't you put down in the comments below what you think is wrong. I'm going to try and find a schematic to confirm my suspicions and when I do I will put it down in the comments below. And that is where I'm going to leave it for this week guys. Unfortunately I'm struggling to get the time to make these videos as good as I want them to be. But like I said a couple of months ago I'm going to keep going and try and make one video a week until I hit either 200 videos or 10,000 subscribers whichever comes first and I'll reevaluate the channel then. I have four more of these motherboards with a power on but no display symptom. Obviously I haven't got a great hit rate of getting those right but how do you get better at something? Just keep trying. So that's what I'm going to keep doing. I will do one of those each of the next four weeks. So tune in next week and we will look at the next one. If you have anything to say to me please post in the comments below and if you think I've got anything wrong in this video please post in the comments below as well because I'm here to learn too. And I will speak to you next week.